Welcome in my tiny office, <laughs> called my room. Um, can you tell us a little overview of yourself and your name? Yeah, so hi, my name is Jordan Orm, and I'm a professional film editor, and I like to edit music videos and commercials, documentaries, narrative films, and I am originally from Hawaii and Wisconsin, but I moved out to Los Angeles for film school, and I've been here ever since, and I graduated like a year and a half ago. I went to Azusa Pacific University in the LA area, and I've been a freelance editor since then, and it's been a really, really fun and great journey, so yeah. What do you enjoy the most? Because you said you are doing music videos, films, commercials. Yeah. So what do you enjoy the most from those? I really like music videos and narrative films the most. Mm. Um, commercials are really lucrative as far as money. So like they're obviously made by big corporations that have a lot of money um, to put into filmmaking. And so they pay a lot. Um, and documentaries are really great for telling individual stories about um, maybe a, like a real life situation. Kind of think of it as like almost a nonfiction genre of filmmaking. But I really like fiction, and so I like telling like imaginative stories. And I also really like music a lot because I'm a drummer. So because of that, I like music videos. So. Yeah, it's a good time. Uh, a good in terms time. of commercials, do they usually tell you how to do it or do you have some freedom? Um, usually it comes down to the creativity of the director. So my job as an editor is to take whatever the director wants to do and execute that and do basically whatever the director wants. Um, but then after the director gets his or her say lots of times the a client will go in and want to make their own changes. So there's a certain number of rounds of notes that come through when you're doing a, a, an edit. And so we have to filter through all those and try to get to the best, most compromising place. So everybody's happy with the edit. And how was your journey as an editor? How did you start? So I started... Um, I came into film school not even knowing if I wanted to do filmmaking. Mm -hmm. And I shot my first short film, so, um, and then I got into the edit room, and I started editing, and I was like going crazy, and I was like, wow, this is so fun. And then I look up at the clock, and it's like 5 a.m. I was like... That's cold flow. You've, <laughs> you've been in here all night. Yeah. What are you doing? And so I was like, wow, this is actually really fun. I lost track of time when I was editing. And so from then on, I was like, let me edit your projects, everyone. I really like editing. So, and then I just keep, I keep doing it and people will keep asking me to edit things and it just keeps, keeps rolling. So yeah, I just really enjoy the process of editing and I feel like it has the most creative freedom other than the director. And so you get the most influence on the project and you get to, really put in your own voice and create it how you'd like it to be. So, yeah. Because I always thought like an editor doesn't have that big freedom. As I said before, you know, I always thought that they just give you notes and they give mm -hmm. you some directions and you just do yeah. it. Like, yeah. How I, how I watched your breakdowns on YouTube. Yeah. I, I understood that it's maybe more free and you can do what, what it you is. Do and, yeah. I didn't know yeah, that. definitely. It's like, usually, obviously, the director has some things that they want to do, but in the first cut, I basically get to pretend that I'm the director, usually. <laughs> I get to be like, okay, I want to make it like this because this is how I like it. Yeah. And then I get to see, I get to, sh um, I get to decide what the audience sees, what the audience doesn't see, how it makes them feel in certain sections. And um, that's a lot of creative power. So I really like, I really like that. And what it took to become an editor for a big productions? Like, did you approach them or did they approach you? Yeah, honestly, that's the Lord because I don't even know how that happened. Um, but <laughs> it's like, what I ended up doing is I took 
I was basically volunteering in film school, like, hey, I would love to edit your projects for free, basically. Mm -hmm. And so I would make a lot of friends that way. And then through those projects, I was able to create a reel. And I sent that reel out to a couple directors that I really admired. And I actually sent it to them on Instagram. And they were like, thanks for sending that. And then one, like a few months later, after I did all that, um, one director named Arad, who I still work with and is a great friend, he's awesome. And he messaged me back and he was like, hey, we're looking for an editor. Would you like to come to the office and chat with us? And I did. And he let me assist and edit on a couple projects. And then he actually let me edit one a few weeks later. And that was really exciting. And apparently I did enough, a good enough job to not get fired. So I'm still here. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's basically how it was. I think the biggest tip I have for people starting out is to just create a lot of relationships. And the way that I did that was I took a lot of people out to coffee that I might know or like took them out to lunch. I was like, hey, I really love your work. I'd love to like buy lunch for you. And then we would go and just chat and become friends. And through becoming friends, um, sometimes work may, might get thrown your way, but like that's not the end goal. The end goal is just to have relationships. And I admire that. People in the I admire that, you know, because like, I don't know when I, even if I have the contacts, I feel not embarrassed, but I feel like I'm annoying them. So I don't use right. that. I'm right. like, okay, I have this contact, amazing, but... I'm not going to approach them because I feel like right. there's so much work and I don't want to, you know, like be annoying. So yeah, right. I admire I that you've the, done that. <laughs> the important thing to remember, which lots of people think that, lots of people are like, oh, I'm bothering them. Like why would they wouldn't want to like talk to me? But people love at any level, like no matter who you are, people love talking about themselves. And they love <laughs> like, like basically what we're doing right now. Like this is really yeah. fun for me because I get to talk about what I like to do. And so if you approach them and you're like, hey, I'm really interested in your work and what you do, they would be like, yeah, I'd love to talk with you because I love talking about what I like to do. And if someone else is interested in it, like, and is willing to listen to me just rant about the random stuff that I do every day that I really like, like, they're, they'd be, they would be so excited to do that. So mm -hmm. don't... I'll just bring the mic. Oh, you're and... short. short. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you are right. Uh... And I think I'm not the only one who needs to hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, a big deal. I wanted to ask you how long you can be in front of the screen, you know, how long you can edit. Oof. I can be on, oh yeah, uh, too long. <laughs> What's too long? <laughs> too long. <laughs> I don't know. It really doesn't matter. I don't really get burnt out. I think um, lots of people, I started using computer glasses once a little bit. But I didn't really like it. Um, I just have my computer on night shift, so it gets like oranger mm -hmm. when it's um, at night, um, which helps with the eye fatigue. But I can be in front of the screen for a really long time. <laughs> it's probably not good for me, but yeah, it's, it's it's important to take breaks and go outside every once in a while. It's yeah. very important. And how how your editing process looks like? So it depends on what it is, if it's a commercial music video, documentary, narrative film. Um, but for music videos, because that's mostly what I'm known for, um, I take all the footage in and I create proxies, which is basically little copy. They're basically little copies of the original footage, but in a lower resolution. So they play back really smooth and fast. Mm -hmm. And so my computer's happy about that. And then... I sync up all of the footage that is has like lip syncs to it and I put that to the song and then any footage that doesn't have any lip syncing to it, I will take and separate it into little B-roll sequences and those are organized by location. So at any time I can take a shot from a random like car location, like if that's where the location is and put that into the video along with the lip sync performance shots already. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of my process. But it takes me almost an entire day to set up a project. So it's really important to do a lot of prepping and make sure you watch all of the footage and get everything perfectly set up before you actually start editing. And then your editing will be a lot faster that way. 
So do you make sometimes also like a folder, like let's say like, okay, details and the wide shots? Yeah, yeah. So I actually have a video on YouTube that shows exactly how I organize my project and how everything's laid out. And it's really great. I actually have a free template on my website, which has all of my folder structure and all of my Premiere folder structure basically in it. I use Premiere Pro. Um, and that is for free on the internet. You can, anybody can download it and you'll have like exactly the professional folder structure all good to go. And if you don't want to do that, I'll just show you how I do that in that video. So go check that out if you want. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, ha have you started with the premiere since the beginning? Or did you um, so I actually started in film school, we learned Avid Media Composer, oh, yeah. which is what a lot of, that's generally the industry standard. Um, so like TV shows, movies, um, bigger commercials will use Avid Media Composer. And it's great. It's an older program, a little bit. Um, and Premiere is more of like the younger brother of that program. Um, and Premiere is really great for short form. So like for music videos or um, shorter commercials, maybe documentaries, um, like lower budget um, productions usually use Premiere. And so that's what I've been using since I graduated, but there might be some projects in the future where I'll need to use at the Media Composer, but that's what I actually learned on mm -hmm. Uh Yeah, I wanted to ask if you are having more projects at the same time, how do you manage them? You know, because mm -hmm. you're in the vibe of one and mm -hmm. then comes another. So how you manage mm -hmm. to... Well, I'm only one person, so I can do one thing at a time, basically, and that's it. So all I have to do is figure out how to prioritize whichever one is most important. And clients generally understand, like, if I'm completely swamped and there's, like, nothing I can do, um, I, have to, I can explain to them that I have this thing that I need to do first. And once I get that done, then I can move on to the next thing. But yeah, it gets stressful. It gets stressful if there's a lot to do at once. And I'm like, 20 places at once. But it's okay. It gets done. And everybody's happy in the end. Mm. But yeah. Uh, you did editing for Justin Bieber. How was that mm -hmm. experience? That was crazy. So I did some work with Arad, like I mentioned before, with Riveting Entertainment. And Andrew Sandler is a producer director who used to work at Riveting Entertainment. He actually DM'd me on Instagram, like the first of the month, I think this year, like on New Year's Day. And he was like, hey, Jordan, um, I've never talked with Andrew before either. And he was like, hey, Jordan, I have like, 20 dance videos or I think he said 15 at the time but I had 15 dance videos for Justin Bieber do you want to edit them and I was like yeah that sounds awesome I know who Justin Bieber is <laughs> and so um we started doing that and we had to shoot about 15 dance videos over the course of one month and finish all of them and so that means that they were shooting every other day and we had about two days to edit each video. And so it was myself and another editor. And so I did about seven of the videos. And so that's what we did. We basically did oh a music video every two days. And so that was pretty crazy. Um, and we just kept going. Like right when we finished another one, there would be a new video and we just edit that one. And there'd be another video and we'll just edit that one. So it was like a crazy marathon masterclass of just editing music videos. And so it was it was fun. There was it was not really normal because there wasn't as many time or there wasn't as much time for notes and revisions. But we had a few sessions with um, the director, his name's Nick DeMar, he's an incredible choreographer, and he is um, Justin Bieber's like tour director and choreographer. And uh yeah, so we just plowed right through it and did it, and I had to finish all the videos, so we sent them all out to color, and I don't think there were any VFX on these, and then we got them back, and I had to 
finish everything, put the titles on, and then send it out. And we had like 15 videos we were sending out all at once. And that was just a lot of exporting time and uploading time because we're all working remote. And so it was. And it's such it a big intense. client. So I would feel. Yeah. Better. Oh. Yeah, exactly. He's he's such a big deal. Like everybody knows he just to be first. But it's it's really cool to be able to say, hey, you know that video with Justin Bieber? Yeah, I've actually edited that. <laughs> no, you didn't. Really cool. No, 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 no. Yeah, I know exactly. Like, no, you didn't. You're crazy. Yeah, I don't know. It's fun. But which one is your favorite yeah, that was from all of those? Thing. So what was that? Uh, which one is your favorite from all of those videos? Ooh, I think my favorite is Come Around Me. Um, it was basically, it was based off of like the purge. And so I had, I was able to do like some fun sound design in the beginning and make the cuts a little more flashy because there was like a security camera section and there was a little section where like they have light up masks, like in the purge, the movies. And so I got to like use those as overlays and make it kind of, it was kind of a little bit more of a flashy edit. So that's why. I, I got to have, go fun, have fun and go a little crazy, so. And was there some funny experience during editing, something like really funny moment? I was, so we had an amazing assistant editor who actually edited one music video. But everybody asked me like, hey, did you like meet Justin Bieber while like you were editing? And I didn't, but the assistant editor was dropping off a hard drive once at the, pro like, the production office and she heard the piano playing, like there's a piano in there and she heard like the piano playing and she like goes around the corner and Justin Bieber is just like playing at the piano yeah. in the production office. And she's like, oh my God, she's like such a big Justin Bieber fan. So I'm glad she saw it. She, I'm glad that she saw him and not me because um, she's such a big fan. But um, yeah, so she actually like saw him and I think said hi, took a picture or whatever and that was pretty cool for her. But. <laughs> Yeah, I, like I never saw him during the whole time, but I saw like the directors and you producers. You saw him on the video. All this. I saw him on the video, but yeah, he actually wasn't in any of the videos because they were uh, dance performance videos. That oh. It's called uh, Changes the Movement, which is a series of basically dance videos to all his songs and it creates like a visual album. And he did that for a purpose as well. Um, I think those were directed by Paris Gobel, who's an amazing choreographer. And so... He's like really supportive of the dance community and then like showcasing dancing as an art. So, yeah. Yeah, there was a moment when you were editing and they just gave you one passage, like you have to edit it when everything was done, right? Like there was one passage in the intentions. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. yeah, exactly. How was that? That was intense. So basically, I was in a session with Nick DeMora and we were basically putting the finishing touches on a lot of the videos that we were working on. We were going through each one and kind of just fine tuning them. And he was like, Oh yeah. So actually on intentions, they just added Quavo to the track. And so the track is longer. And I was like, no, great. This happens from time to time in music videos where they add features or they change the song a little bit while we're editing the music video. And so at that point, when the songs change, I have to change the entire video. So basically, there's this giant gap in the middle of the song where Quavo's section is, and then they also added another chorus. So there's like this huge gap in my timeline. And so we were just like, ah, oh, crap, like, what do we do, man? <laughs> and Does so... It, did it take a long time to figure it out, like, what you are going to do? Or you were, like, straight away finding idea yeah so i had a couple ideas he didn't know what to do exactly and i was like let's try a couple things so i actually took sections of the performance because he has like he had an entire like the whole thing choreographed except for that section now because it's a gap and so i took different um parts of the choreography from each chorus and put it on the new chorus and but showed different camera angles that we haven't seen before so it felt new and it felt like a different thing and not something that we've already seen before even though the choreography was the exact same and so i did that for the chorus section and then for quavo's verse i took freestyle dances because he shot each he shot different um 
basically freestyle dances of individual dancers just kind of freestyling to the song. And so I took different sections from those performances and just edited something together, added some little effects, some little flashy cuts, and that was Quavo's verse. And so we just filled up Gap with freestyle dancing. And it's pretty fun because I got to not stick with just the choreography. I got to create the choreography with the edit, which was always really fun for me. So, yeah, it turned out great. But it was stressful in the moment because we were like, oh, frick, we have a lot more work to do. And deadlines are approaching and the songs are changing. And ah. <laughs> Sometimes ah. it's more productive to work under pressure than to have longer time for a work, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you get work done a lot faster when there's a little, when there's a little pressure, when there's a little fire under your butt, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Do you have your studio or your work from the home? So I actually work from home right now. Um, it would be nice to have a studio, but I also don't like to pay rent for a studio. So I can do my job mostly completely at home. So I just, I just do that. And sometimes I go into production um, company offices if they want to have sessions or if they want to talk with clients or if they want me to edit there, then I'll go and edit there. But generally I work from home, which is, which is quite nice. <laughs> Aren't you easily distracting when you're working from home? No, I'm actually not. I have a superpower um, of focus. I have a, like a literal focus superpower. But because I have a focus superpower, I literally cannot multitask. Mm -hmm. Like I'm handicapped in multitasking, but I can focus really, really well. So if I have my headphones on and I'm having fun editing, like I don't really want to do anything else. So mm -hmm. I just, it's fun for me. So. Lucky you. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you if, you could give some advice to younger Jordan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What it would be? Um, to younger Jordan. What younger Jordan needs to hear to not stress about everything so much. <laughs> younger Jordan was a little bit uptight and really worried about how his projects turned out. And I think one thing that he needs to know is that relationships are the most important thing. Um, because relationships are ways that you repeat work and you repeat jobs. And once you're making films with your friends, that's like the best thing ever mm -hmm. is being able to make films with your friends. And so when I was taking people to coffee and creating relationships that way, um, that was the best thing I think I could have done. And I would really recommend people doing that if they want to um, kind of break into the industry when, when people say that. Um, and then also watch a lot of films and videos because that's how you get inspiration and that's how you learn how to do things. I think the best thing that I did was I just watched a lot of music videos and watched a lot of films. When I was in film school, I would like go on Vimeo all the time. Um, and Vimeo is a place where lots of filmmakers put their videos. And I would watch like staff picks like all the time. And I would just sit there and watch them and kind of learn and uh, kind of um, just soak in the different aspects of the filmmakers' styles and see what I could apply to my own films. And yeah but i think it's all about relationships and mastering your craft and also the last thing is to be be able to have fun while you're working because people basically are hiring you to do a job and they're also hiring you to hang out with you so you need to be like a fun person to hang out with otherwise they're not really going to want to hire you again because there's a bajillion people that can edit and there's a bajillion people that can do whatever filmmaking job it is but they want to be able to have you edit and do an awesome job as well as hang out with you and have fun. So, yeah. yeah. Because I know some people and they're like from the industry and they're so focused on the goal and they're not enjoying the whole journey. They're like, let's yeah. just rush there. Let's, yeah. let's have it done. And they like the whole process is just, they're not enjoying it. You know, it's just yeah. like it passed and they're like, okay, so I was waiting for this goal, but you know, I don't feel this excitement. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I don't remember what it's called, but it's that effect where once you get whatever you're going for, like you feel unsatisfied and you want the next thing. Yeah. And so it's like 
yeah, enjoying the process is honestly just like a life tip because that's what life is, you know, but we're all in the process of trying to get to the next thing. And so we may as well enjoy that process because that's what the majority of life is, you know, so. I'm going to write it here with the big letters. <laughs> enjoy the process. <laughs> right. That's right. It's time to make some t-shirts for that. Yeah. Do you have your favorite music, music video, but not one you made but one which inspired you the most or one you really like like is your favorite all the time favorite one of my favorite music videos of all time mm. um my favorite oof, i think my favorite music video director which i rant about on my channel is joseph khan and he does a lot of or he did he doesn't do it anymore he did a lot of taylor swift videos And I really, really like Look What You Made Me Do mm -hmm. as far as an American music video um, by Taylor Swift. It's just like so well directed. Like it's incredible. I could, yeah, I could, I mean, I did rant basically on YouTube for like 13 minutes and 50 something seconds about it. So yeah, he's just, he's very, very good with his camera work and very good with knowing how to tell the story with the camera and how to um, create energy and uniqueness and his use of the effects and just everything that is filmmaking just comes together in this sweet aroma of awesomeness. I love it. Were you thinking to try directing as well? I would really actually like to try directing. I think at some point, Um, the toughest thing about directing, like basically when you're a director, your entire job is just to be a good communicator. And that's not like I can do it, but that's not my strong suit. I'm a lot better at like taking direction and like being creative with it. And that's why I like editing so much. Um, and, but yeah, I really would like to try my hand in directing at some point. I think. Because that you're very be really communicative. Fun. I can imagine you being a director. Really? Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, outgoing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm actually highly introverted. And so I like spend all my energy at once. And then like I go retreat into my corner. I'm like, don't talk to me for like. But it's like that. It's like that. They're like, I feel like extroverts are introverts at the same time. Like I'm also extra extrovert. But then I have my uh -huh. period when I'm like for a week, I just need to be in my room with myself. Right. Right. Yeah. It's normal. Yeah, I feel so, like. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, that's so true. But yeah, I think I would like to try directing at some point. It's tough though too. To like, just like it's a lot harder to break into the industry as a director than it is an editor. So really? it's it's definitely challenging. But maybe if you want to be a director, but you can edit, maybe try editing first as you work towards your directing goals. I don't know. You could try that. And how it works in LA, like, is it, is it closed for, like, young people? Are they holding some kind of the same crew and it's hard to get in or is it open? Um, it's actually, like, music video, one reason music videos are so popular is it's probably the easiest area to break into um, because there's so many of them being made and they're being made for cheaply because... Um, Artists are very poor, basically, <laughs> and they don't want to pay a whole lot for music videos unless you're making really big budget, big artist label music videos. So it's pretty easy, honestly, to um, to break into music videos. Um, but as far as getting into other spaces, like especially the commercial space, I haven't even done that many commercials, um, partially because I'm known for music videos, but partially because it's also hard to break into. Um, But so is, if you're a young person, music videos are pretty easy to get into. But I, I don't know. I think age and seniority matters a lot more in narrative. Um, but if you are talented and fun to work with, like your age doesn't matter too much. If you're a nice person and you're just like fun to be around, mm. it doesn't really matter. Anybody can do it. Yeah. And are you working on something right now at the moment? Um, I'm actually not. I'm in between projects. Um, I've had some fun projects come across the plate. Um, but I have um, 
probably some, I've been doing a lot of work with Nike actually. Mm -hmm. I'm doing some like some of their social media campaigns and that's picking up next week. So I have some stuff scheduled, but I'm not actually in the middle of a job right now, which is nice. So I'm actually yeah, working at Pete. Because we have time to talk to. <laughs> That's right. So we, we love having a little bit of availability during the day. And I'm working on my YouTube videos and my YouTube channel right now. And so that's, that's what my work is. But yeah, I'm not, cur not currently editing it mm -hmm. other than my YouTube videos. Yeah. And I have to tell everyone, <laughs> because that was the last question, that go and watch these videos because they are uh -huh. amazing they're fun and you can learn a lot so <laughs> let's finish okay. it like that that's really kind that's really kind. i'm so glad you enjoyed them you were able to get a, a couple laughs out of them that's like that's the goal i just want people to have fun and maybe learn about editing so yeah, yeah. so thank you for chat 